Vietnam Airlines is kind of becoming my dark horse, always surprising me in really pleasant ways. Hi there, my name is Kevin, and I make honest and to-the-point narrated trip reports about flights and premium hotels all over the world. This is episode 138, and today we're going to be flying from Kuala Lumpur to Saigon on a Vietnam Airlines A321. Stay tuned, the full report starting in 10 seconds. Welcome to Kuala Lumpur. Right now, I'm in a grab on my way to KLIA-1, or just simply KLIA, which is the terminal that Vietnam Airlines operates out of. In case you're not familiar, this is as opposed to KLIA-2, which is the low-cost terminal operated by AirAsia, which is very far away from the other terminal. If you'd like to know the exact fare that I paid for my flight today, or you just want to know my next five videos in queue, please check out the description below. If you're a frequent viewer, you know that lately I've been on this whole unsponsored kick, and it will surely continue today. Why is that? Because there's just so much content on YouTube, and it's increasing by the day, that is presenting itself as an honest review, but sometimes it's just so clear that there's a sponsorship of some sort involved. Sponsored, unbiased reviews simply don't exist. So today, you're going to hear my own honest opinion and nothing more, because this flight is 100% self-funded. No matter what brought you here today, if you enjoy honest and authentic travel content, please make sure to give this video a thumbs up and hit subscribe with notifications on so that you don't miss any of my new videos because y'all are the sponsors of this video. So I appreciate you just for stopping by. If you'd like, you can also take a look at my Patreon linked in the description below. Now onto the review. Heading over to the check-in counter since Vietnam Airlines does not currently offer digital boarding passes, though that is changing very soon. So onto the counter I went. I have a soon expiring SkyTeam Elite Plus membership with ETA Airlines, so I went to the Sky Priority Line, which is always a pleasant treat when flying economy. This is my first time to KL since COVID, and prior to that, I always flew via jet down here, so I had no idea that Vietnam Airlines uses the Malaysia Airlines Golden Lounge, which is actually one of my favorite lounges. Had I known, I probably would have arrived a little bit earlier. Despite what turned out to be a full flight, the check-in area, though, was surprisingly quiet. Immigration was super quick, and soon I was through to the terminal for my habit of checking out all of the model planes on display. Vietnam Airlines is hiding in their way in the back. Our flight today is departing from the satellite terminal, so we need to take the air train to head over there. There's also a bus service available if for some reason you're not really into cool little airport trains. Once you're there, if you're heading to the Golden Lounge, after you get off from the train, the lounge is above and behind you, but you need to walk towards the center of the terminal to take an escalator or elevator one level up. Vietnam Airlines is, you guessed it, the flag carrier of Vietnam, and operates a true two-hub route system split between Hanoi and Saigon. In addition to this, Vietnam Airlines is the largest airline by capacity on the Hanoi to Saigon route, which is one of the busiest in the world. On a daily basis, they operate 35 to 40 flights in each direction on this route, with most of those flights taking place on wide-body aircraft. During the Lunar New Year period, the number of flights will double if not triple. Now, I mentioned that this is one of my favorite lounges, and it is, but please don't expect some beautiful spread of food. All the alcohol that you might want is in a separate bar to the left as you walk inside. The reason I love this lounge so much is for its apron views, especially considering the litany of airlines that fly into Kuala Lumpur. If you're hungry, there is certainly plenty of food on offer, but in my experience, it's nothing special. And near every time I'm in here, you can see new cost-cutting measures. This time, there were no longer cans of drinks or bottles of water. 
you needed to order just one cup at a time from behind the counter. There is, however, a noodle bar, which was a nice addition put in a few years ago. I love the design of the satellite terminal. Designed by Kisho Kurokawa, the roof lines are meant to evoke a fusion of Malay and Islamic architecture styles, with a kinda sorta famous rainforest in the middle of the terminal. Alright, time to head to the gate. Kuala Lumpur, KLA-1 specifically, similar to Changi in Singapore, has security at each gate instead of central facilities. I got to the gate just in time to watch our 11-year-old A321 pull up into the gate. Let's check out today's flight stats. We took off almost on time and made our way up to 33,000 feet for the short 96 minute hop up to Tansan Yat International Airport, where we landed 25 minutes early. By the way, I don't always get to mention it in every video, but I am always open to feedback or suggestions, so feel free to leave it in the comments below. Vietnam Airlines currently operates a fleet of 99 aircraft consisting of AT-72s, A321s, A350s, and 787s. And just as of recently, a few A320neos. The narrow-body aircraft feature two styles of business class, the older of the two seen here, and three styles of the economy seat. The older one also seen here, and two newer styles, one with IFE and the other without. Personally, the old seats are my favorite of the three. They predate slimline seats, and therefore, there really aren't any horrible seats on board. For today, I was in 22 Alpha. I've had multiple comments on previous videos mentioning that the space between the seats looked generous, but when I showed the knee room, it looked horrible. Keep in mind that the depth of the seat cushion itself plays a huge role in this. Low-cost carriers may have the same physical distance between the end of your seat and the back of the next seat, but because the seat itself is shorter, it's tighter. This is why the industry measures seat legroom in seat pitch, which measures the same two points on two consecutive rows of seats. We pushed back next to a beautiful Malaysian A350 and taxied our way to the runway where we'd be taking off to the southeast before turning to the northeast for our flight. The spool up and takeoff coming up next. After a few minutes, we popped above the clouds to find some very fluffy ones waiting for us. As soon as the seatbelt sign was turned off, the crew sprang into action and began the meal service for today's flight. Our options were beef with noodles or fish with rice. I went with the beef. 
If I had to guess, I'd say that this was a Vietnamese version of a beef rendang and was full of flavor. Even the greens were nice and garlicky and delicious and not just the normal bland steam stuff. That all served with a roll and a banana. Not a bad meal for such a quick hop. And a really quick hop it was. Soon after the meal service was finished, we were crossing over Kham Mau province in the very south of Vietnam, and we began our descent. Flying over the Mekong Delta will never ever get old for me. The web of interwined rivers and farmland always makes for a really beautiful approach. Soon enough, we were coming in hot over Saigon and landed shortly after. I'm not sure if the inner part of my window was loose or what, but here's the power of the reverse thrusters. We taxied past a pair of Vietjet's new A330s and made our way, seemingly, to our own little private corner. And that's that. Now on to the flip-flop score. It was an exceedingly pleasant flight. Vietnam Airlines simply does really well on these short regional flights. The crew are always, always warm and friendly, and relatively speaking, the flights are usually on time with luggage coming out pretty quick in Saigon. I really do hope that you enjoyed this quick trip report today. If you did, please give it a big thumbs up and hit subscribe so that you don't miss a beat. I'll see you next time on Bamboo Airways from Saigon to Bangkok Sawanapum Airport.